Hey, hey, glitter friends. Welcome back to part two of my Love You to Death tutorial. So let's get started. So in part one, I showed you why I left the tiniest little space here on the vinyl. And now that it's been epoxied, we'll use this as a perfect centering mark to lay our decal. To incorporate all the colors of this design into the decal, I used three different types of vinyl. First, I have used a white removable vinyl. It's just kind of a matte, non-shiny. I find that's pretty easy to work with. Then I have a black graphite gray and a red. I'm going to start by carefully placing the first layer of vinyl down. We've already got our spot picked out there because we definitely want to hide where those stripings don't meet. I tend to like to layer my vinyl on the cup because I feel like it gives you a better chance to get rid of any type of air bubbles that might be created that you'd have to pop later on. One trick I've learned along the way is to, after you place your decal, no matter how straight it looks, I always like to stand it up and look at it eye level because you will catch so many more mistakes that way and I promise it will save you a lot of heartache in the long run. Now that I'm ready to layer this second skull piece in this black holographic vinyl, I'm going to use the hinge method for this one, except for instead of just using the side because this is slightly odd shaped, I'm going to do it onto the bottom as well. That way I know I have it perfectly centered. This vinyl is actually pretty easy to work with. You can also find it at Mr. Nola's Glitter in the specialty vinyl section and you're going to look for Starcraft Specialty Vinyl. I will link this in the information for this tutorial as well. Once you can see that you have got this piece of vinyl lined up on the top right there on the bottom and the side, you can go ahead and take the backing off and gently work it onto the cup. For this type of holographic vinyl, I like to start in the middle and then work my way out on each side. So to save us some time, because I know this is already a pretty lengthy tutorial, I've gone ahead and pre-layered my wording, wording vinyl before this tutorial. As you can see, I'm going to place this wording just directly in the middle of this skull decal. This entire decal set can be found on my website under digital designs, which will also be linked in this tutorial. In this digital download, you'll find this entire layering set that I am placing right here, along with the tiny skulls and hearts sheets um, that we will be using in the next couple of steps. All right, so now it is tiny decal time. Um, included, like I said, with the digital download comes all of these little hearts and skulls. I definitely didn't print out all that comes with it. Um, so that's just up to your personal preference of how many you print. I do like to print extras because you never know when you'll need them for another project. Here I'm going to start with the little hearts because I decided at the very last minute I wanted to place a couple onto the skull decal. I'm just going to place three here in random spots. Uh, feel free to not use those or place more or less. So 
So now I am going to just start placing the tiny hearts all over the cup. I definitely didn't have a pattern in mind, but I knew that I wanted to get them on there first because they were smaller and I knew I would want more of them on the cup than the skulls. I'm definitely going to speed this up for you guys because this was probably the most labor intensive or took the longest part of this tutorial. But as you can see here, I am just trying to space them out as evenly as possible because I wanted them to look random and not like a specific pattern. Now that I'm happy with the placement and how many little red hearts I have on the cup, I'm going to move on to the tiny little gray skulls. Uh, this is still the same type of graphite holographic vinyl I used from earlier. I am going to simply place these around in any holes left where I didn't have hearts. I'm definitely going to use fewer of these because I didn't want to overwhelm the cup with too much of a pattern. Now I'll add a layer of epoxy to this before we move on to the next step. So this is quickly becoming one of my favorite methods to create a drip on a cup. I am going to use my hot temp glue gun and here I have red glitter glue sticks. Um, I picked these up at Hobby Lobby. You can find them on Amazon, Walmart. They're pretty readily available anywhere. So I've chosen to start applying my drips to the front of the cup just because I wanted to make sure it wasn't going to interfere with my decal. For the best outcome, you definitely want to work at most one to two drips at a time. That way you have time to get the placement correct and it's not drying too fast. The other item that you're going to need to have on hand is your heat gun. So the one I use is actually super high powered. You definitely don't need one this strong, um, but it's what I have, so we're gonna go with it. So you're gonna take your heat source and you're going to hit each of these drips quickly, trying not to hold it on there for too long of a time because it can begin to smoke and nobody wants that, right? Continue using your heat gun on that specific spot until you've got the drips as long as you want and then you can continue to work your way around the cup, adding a couple of drips at a time until you reach your beginning point. And while I still do love a good epoxy drip, it creates a completely different look. I found that this is just a lot quicker and for me it works a lot better when I'm wanting to do a glitter drip design. While it's the longest section, I definitely chose to keep this part in real time just so you could see exactly how long I keep my heat gun or whatever heat source you're using on the hot glue. I want to say I used about three glue sticks for this in total, so to save yourself some hassle and trouble, I'd definitely go ahead and have those out and ready for when you need them. To me, the secret of making a drip look really great is to make sure that all of your drips aren't the same length and to definitely pay attention and make sure the top of your cup has enough covering of the drip to it doesn't look so thin. Once you've made it all the way around and you're not completely happy with your drips, another great thing about using the hot glue gun method is you can go back right on top of the drips themselves or other spots where there maybe isn't enough hot glue put more and heat it down with your heat gun and it blends seamlessly.
Okay, so now that our initial glitter technique drip is done, we're going to go in with our Boiling Mad Junior once again and fix those spots around the rim and in some of the drips where the glitter coverage is just not the best. Remember how I said earlier, I feel like using this hot glue technique just makes your glitter application easier? Well, this is why. Instead of having to wait a complete dry time, what you're going to do is you're going to take your heat source, in my case, my heat gun again, you're going to pick a part to start and you're just simply going to heat it up just enough to make your glue tacky. Once again, work in short, small sections because the glue will dry super fast again, but after you hit a couple of drips with heat, you're just going to grab your glitter and you're going to sprinkle it on there much like you would glitter a cup. Continue to use this technique and work your way around the cup until your drip is completely covered with your glitter. Again, I kept this part of the tutorial in real time and didn't speed it up for you guys because I thought it was important for you to see how long you need to hit that glue with your heat source just enough to make it tacky so your glitter will adhere. Because we epoxied over our decals, this next part should be relatively easy and painless. Again, I'm going to use my makeup brush that I picked up at the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to sweep off all of the excess red glitter. Now, because we did use a hot glue gun, you all are familiar with the dreaded strings that come with using that for anything. But it should be pretty easy to clean up because all you're going to do is you're going to take your X-Acto knife find any of the little strings which should be red easy to spot and you're just going to scrape them off
After removing all of these little strings, I will take a couple of Q-tips by rubbing alcohol and some paper towels and clean up any spots where I'm afraid there might be leftover glue residue. Then it is time for our next and final epoxy layer. For this final step, I have mixed up 15 milliliters of my Mr. Nola's Glitter Speed Dry Epoxy, and I've also got on hand a small Taclon brush. You can find these links in the information for this video as well. I'm going to start by applying my epoxy as normal as I do for any other cup, working it around all the way until the entire cup is coated. Because I sealed these drips quickly with a clear spray paint after the glitter was done, I'm not too worried about this red glitter migrating and getting onto other parts of the cup. After you're satisfied with the coverage of epoxy on your tumbler, you're going to take your small Taclon brush and you're going to dip it into the epoxy first simply to wet the bristles. This keeps it from creating more air bubbles than necessary. Then you're going to start, you're going to just kind of manually turn your cup and you're going to use this and swipe all the way around where these drips are trying to clean up any excess epoxy that will pool at a later time and make you lose some of the details on your cup. Continue working your way around the cup until you're satisfied that while your drips are still completely covered in epoxy, you've removed enough excess to where there won't be a pooling issue.
Once your epoxy is completely dry and you find that maybe your glitter is slightly bumpy, you can definitely go back and do this step over just to get better coverage. And that's it. Thank you guys for joining me today and I hope you learned a lot. Make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming tutorials. See you next time. Bye.